Hey everybody, John here, I'll take your forge, welcome back. So a while back I did a Viking axe from scrap build, I used a three piece construction, it was a spring steel bit, inlaid to a mild steel body, welded to a mild steel eye. This is what I came up with, there's nothing wrong with it but I feel like I could do a little better so I'm going to make another one using a two piece construction this time, sticking with the scrap theme. So I got a piece of leaf spring that I'm going to make the entirety of the blade out of, and I got a piece of that same flat bar that I'm going to make the eye out of. I want kind of a longer neck area. Also, the eye on this is way too thick, so I'm going to thin that down a little bit. And also, I want, of a, want kind of a longer beard on it. So anyway, that's what we're trying to do, so stick around. So here's the steel we're starting with. A piece of that same scrap flat bar that came out of my grandpa's barn. We made the uh, body and the eye out of it in the last one. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to isolate the area that's going to be the eye, and I'm going to thin it down. Because uh, with so much weight and mass in the eye on the other one, it screwed up the balance and it made it kind of hard to throw and I want it to be a little better. To make the blade, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to upset this area and bring it back to make the part that's going to be welded to the eye as well as draw this down to make the beard, trying to go from that to that. So that's what I'm trying to so do. First thing I'm going to do is going to mark the area that I'm going to forge out to become the eye. So I'm just going to use the edge of my anvil about there should do it. this side about there should do it and at this stage I'll just take the rounding hammer and start spreading out the material between those two marks Next step, we're going to scarf down the areas that are going to be welded to the blade. So we've got both scarfs made, now we've got to get it ready to be welded together. So we're going to give it a good brush. Give it a good fluxing. So we're bending this baby around. eye after being welded up and forged roughly to shape. I could dress it up more later if I need to. But see our weld took real nice. I was careful not to weld the scarfs at the end together so I can get the blade in there. But that's looking pretty good so now we'll get started on the blade. So to make the blade we're going to start by upsetting some of this back to become the area that's going to be welded into the eye. I don't really have a good pair of tongs to hold this stuff so it's kind of tricky. So just keep working down that area that's going to be welded. And to forge out what's going to be the blade, we'll just prop this guy up on the edge of our anvil. Start upsetting that to bring it that way. It's a little tough at first because there's not a whole lot for it to rest on. But the further you go, the easier it'll get. Alright, I've come to the conclusion this is way too much material. So I'm going to kind of make an adjustment on the fly here. I'm going to cut off all of this back here. Then draw this out lengthwise and then we'll weld that to our eye. And it should save us a lot of work. Definitely wasted a lot of effort forging this thing down, but you leave you learning, right? So 
So now we're just going to work this thing out that way to get the length we're looking for. So here's where we are in the uh, Viking Axe from Scrap 2 build. As you can see, we definitely have a longer throat, which is what I was going for. And we've got about the same width that we have on the edge of the old X, but this is before I forged in the taper or the bevels. So I'm gonna gain even more when I do that. You know, had I had, or had I used two inch wide by quarter inch thick 5160 bar stock, it would have made my life a lot easier, but we're sticking with the from scrap theme. So this is where we are, it's the end of the day, so I'm gonna have to pick it up again tomorrow. But uh, when we get started tomorrow, we'll start back here, forging the taper down to the edge, bring it down this way some more, forge in the scarf, weld it all up, and we'll have an X. All right, folks, it's the next day. I got a new plan of attack on this axe blade. It's still about twice as thick as I need it to be. So I'm going to cut all this off. I'm going to cut all that off, bring it in, draw it out some more, and then when I hammer out the bevels, it should bring it to its finished dimensions. A lot more work than if I had just started with flat bore, but I guess this is what I get for using recycled material. But uh, it's too late to turn back now, so we're going to see the project through. There's one end. So I got the ends cut off, now I just gotta keep working it in and out and then to its final thickness. This could be a lot of hammer work. I'll spare you the pain of sitting here watching me draw out the whole thing. So I've got my billet forged out where I want it. It's about a quarter of an inch thick by about two inches wide by about five and a half inches long, maybe a little more. That's as wide as it'll comfortably fit in my forge. So now it's time to get this thing ready to be welded to the uh, eye. So I'm gonna go ahead and forge in the edge bevel, starting from about back here. And about back here, I'll forge in a scarf, cut some teeth onto it. We'll weld it all up and we'll be uh, done forging this thing, finally. So to make my bevels, I'm just gonna start about halfway up the billet. And just work my way towards the edge. Now the bevel this side real quick like. Forging a scarf on the area we're going to weld to the eye. Right about there should do it. And I'll just take a good sharp chisel and cut some teeth onto our scarf at about 45 degrees, opposite direction. This is what will help it grab a hold of the body when you put it in there. So now what we should be able to do is take our blade. this set at this point I'm just going to take a few more heats to blend in these seams a little better. All right, now it's time to drift the eye out once from the bottom once from the top as you get us forward. All right so it's day three of working on this finally get another chance to work on it stuff keeps getting in my way you know I don't do this for a living I do have a day job which takes priority over this. But I've got the profile I want to make marked out. I'm going to grind all this flat. My edge is still considerably thicker than I need it to be, so I should be able to get a good defined edge grind, which is what I was trying to do. I'll grind off all the weld seams, and uh, hopefully we'll have an axe. All right, so it's time to quench this thing. It's raining pretty hard, so I don't know if that's going to screw with the audio or not. It has before. The paint can I used for the last one wasn't quite white enough, so I had to improvise, and I used this scrap cooking tray I had sitting on the ground in my workshop somewhere. But I've got a grinding disc ready. We're going to draw a temper this. I'm going to go ahead and tell you about it now, so I'm not worried about it when I'm trying to do it. Basically, I'm just going to quench the edge, get all the heat out of it, and I'm going to pull it out, clean off some of the scale until I can see true metal, and I'm going to watch the temper colors run until I see the color I want. I want kind of a dark brown on an axe like this. But this guy's up to critical. My oil's preheated. 
hopefully this whole thing doesn't just burst into flames, it probably will. color I want to see. It's creeping forward. We got brown back here. There we go. Got it. Here's the axe out of the quench. Jarred up well. So next thing I'm going to do is just strike in my cutting edge. I'm going to start back here and slowly kind of convex it towards the edge to blend in the seams of these welds a little better. And uh, once this thing's sharp, it'll be done. So next thing I'm going to do is just burn and oil the handle just to give it that antiqued look. These are prefabricated tomahawk handles. I buy them from Crazy Crow Trading Post. They're like $4 a piece. You know, I couldn't shape one of these out for $4 worth of labor, so to me it's worth it. And they fit my tomahawk drift exactly. So I'm going to it. Here's our handle. I didn't char it black like I do with my hammer handles. I just kind of burned it until I thought it looked cool. Gave it a couple coats of oil. So now we'll just install the head. We'll cut off that excess and she's done. So it's still raining, but I've got a little bit of a break. But here's my first axe, and here's this one. So you can see it's about twice the size, looks much better. I'm a lot happier with it. It's much heavier, which I honestly prefer in a throwing axe. It's much more blade forward heavy. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and take a few whacks of this thing, see how it, how it chops. Thing's a beast. Let's give it a throw. Not bad. Let's see if we can get another one. Yeah, kind of. So, here she is all done. Very happy with the way this one came out. It was a long road starting with that big chunk of leaf spring. It was kind of a dumb idea. Next time I do it, I'll probably just start with quarter inch 5160 flat bar. But I set out to make one from scrap, and that's what I did. So if you watch the whole video, learn from my mistakes. But we did get a beautiful and serviceable axe out of it. So there you go. How cool is that? So please like, share, subscribe, all that jazz. Lots more cool stuff coming like always, and thank you.